Ladies and gentlemen, in this video I want to talk to you guys about Intel's upcoming CPU releases. We're going to talk about the iGPUs, but primarily I want to focus on the release dates and how AMD potentially is going to have quite a nice lead over Arrow Lake with its Zen 5 architecture. Now, Zen 5, of course, is going to be the Ryzen 8000 series, and it's quite commonly known at this stage that this year, Intel will give us a refresh of Raptor Lake, which is known, unsurprisingly, as the Raptor Lake S refresh. It will be the 14th generation. This has been discussed ad nauseum at this point, but to give you the very basics, it is essentially exactly the same thing. Again, it will be socket compatible with the current motherboards. The only real difference is that it has high clock frequencies. As far as I'm aware, anyway, there are no changes, for example, to the IPC. There's no increases to, let's say, the, the L2 or L3 or whatever caches. There's no real difference though it's basically the same thing but it is optimized to go to higher clock speeds which is you know all well and good let's say intel gets like low six gigahertz which are the rumors that's going to be a nice boost and it should be a very interesting thing to see how that compares against let's say the 7950x 3d now this information of october 2023 for the release date is quite close to what i was personally told that it's going to be around september time but um yeah obviously this information is from enthusiastic citizen which has then been translated by hxl on twitter now now, according to their information, furthermore, there will be a locked variant which will come just over a month later. It's going to be between November and December. I think the majority of the audience who are watching this video, who are more hardcore, they're probably not so interested in the locked variants. Well, maybe for like small form factor builds, that type of thing. But again, these will be the 14th generation. Obviously, we're on the 13th generation. And Arrow Lake S will be the, you guessed it, the 15th generation. And the release date, according to um, Enthusiastic Citizen, is going to be late 2024 and early 2025. I've discussed um, the... Arrow Lake processors quite a bit recently, so I'm just going to go over this really briefly. But basically speaking, we're looking at 8 P cores and 16 E cores, which are Lion and Skymont respectively. Now, it was going to be 32 E cores for Skymont, but this was cut down. I've heard different IPC numbers as always with this stuff, so don't take this with any confidence, but I've heard around 20% over Raptor Lake. Someone else told me it's a little more than that. It's possibly around 23, 24%. Uh, it's close to around 20% over Meteor Lake, but again, I'll you know, when it comes to like IPC, it's very difficult to know exactly what that workload is. Is it a typical workload? Is it one thread? Is it multiple threads? Are we referring to games? Are we referring to like a very specific application like Heavy AVX 512 or is it integer? You get the idea. It's it's very difficult to know, and this stuff obviously can also change based upon the engineering sample and stuff that's being tested and blah blah blah. But Meteor Lake was also going to be part of the 15th generation, but that is now scrapped. You can see the previous information that uh, I have on screen, but it is now dead. So Meteor Lake, at least according to what Intel are doing now, this is now going bye-bye and we will only see Arrow Lake with lower end variants basically coming out um, so, for example, they will cut down the core count for, let's say, the equivalent of the i5s or whatever Intel ends up calling these processors with their recent name change. But this is also going to be very interesting because, according to everything I'm hearing anyway, mid next year to possibly around Q3 is when it, uh, AMD will launch its Zen 5 processors. Now, that, of course potentially means that Intel have, well, basically they have several months potentially where they don't have an exact answer, which is kind of typical in this desktop or mobile space. Now, obviously, another thing that AMD has in its back pocket is also the X3D variants as well. And they could quite conceivably release those around the same time of, let's say, Arrow Lake if they're like, ha, you know what? I actually feel like we need a little bit more performance or possibly not even for that. Maybe they just want it for, for marketing buzz, for example. It's actually kind of funny because AMD have a lot of potential options going forward. It's going to be very interesting to see what they do with the, with the 3D V cache. So one of the earlier rumors of the Ryzen um, 5000 series, of course, going back to Zen 3, is that it had dual chiplet Ryzen 5000s, which 
I leaked and I think a couple of other people as well, but they never actually did so and they only came out with one chip. But it's actually kind of funny because Gamers Nexus actually went on tour at a Ryzen lab and basically it seems that, yep, there's a 192 megabyte variant of this with a dual version. So it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD does with these processors, whether um, Zen 5 actually ends up with two stacks or just a single stack. I haven't had any information there. So it's going to be very curious to see how the desktop actually shakes out. Also, just real quick, I wanted to discuss um, the uh, iGPUs for these processors because there have been some confusion. Now, obviously, my info could be wrong, but as far as I'm aware anyway, we will see Meteor Lake. Not that that makes too much difference for desktop, but still, obviously, it's going to come out in some form factors. That will be XE lpg and then arrow lake is going to be based on xe lpg as well and obviously that is essentially a refresh slight tweaked version of the original alchemist and then it's going to be lunar link onwards where we have xc2 based which is going to be essentially battle mage and then panther lake that is going to be celestial also known as xe3 as far as I understand, actually, Battle Mage is coming on rather well, at least to the discrete GPUs. So it's going to be a very interesting, honestly, to keep up with both Intel and AMD in the desktop space, as well as all three when it comes to the uh, GPUs. I'm very excited to see what the next generation next year comes out with, especially the mid-range for Intel. I'm hearing some good things. But as always, I'll keep you guys updated. Anyway, it's just a shorter video today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like and all that stuff. And I'll see you soon. Stay safe, guys. Bye for now.